What is the best dividend ETF you can buy? In this video, we're gonna compare the five most popular dividend ETFs ranked by assets under management. We'll look at VIG, VYM, SCHD, DVY, and DGRO. This video is for educational purposes only. It should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. It is not an offer to buy or sell any security. Past performance does not indicate future results. Investing is risky. And we're gonna rank each of these ETFs on a scale of one to five based on seven different factors, which include methodology, the income or dividend yields they provide, the dividend growth that they've historically generated, diversification, the expenses, risk, and performance. At the end of this video, I'll share with you the overall scores for each of the five ETFs. First, let's start with the methodology or how each ETF is constructed. We'll start with the number five, which I view as the worst methodology, and that is VYM. VYM has no REITs, and they rank each stock based on the forecasted 12-month dividend. Then they take the top half and then market cap weight those. Number four is DVY. DVY constructs the portfolio by looking at the five-year dividend growth, so only stocks that have raised the dividend for five consecutive years. They also have a maximum payout ratio that the stocks are allowed to have. You can have REITs in DVY, those are not kicked out, and then they weight each stock by the dividends that are paid. The number three best methodology is, in my opinion, Degro. Degro also uses a five-year dividend growth minimum. They also restrict payout ratio to no more than 75%. And for those that don't know, payout ratio is simply the earnings per share as the denominator and the dividends paid as the numerator. So a business paying out $100 in dividends and earning $200 would have a payout ratio of 50%. If the dividend was, say, $200 and the business earned $210, then the payout ratio would be 95%. So generally, we prefer a lower payout ratio to a higher one. Each stock that makes it through those two criteria is then market cap weighted, which simply means the total value of the business gets a larger weighting. So for example, if Apple were to make it through, that would be the largest weighting since it's the biggest company in the investable universe. Number two is VIG. VIG requires at least 10 years worth of dividend growth. They also exclude the upper 25% of yields the reason they do this is generally higher yielding companies will have more risk. The market is pricing them lower relative to the dividends they're paying, which suggests they may cut their dividends, or at least the market thinks that that is a possibility. The weights for each stock is capped at 4%, and then they rebalance VIG annually. It's also worth noting that VIG actually changed the indices. It used to follow the NASDAQ US Dividend Achiever Select Index, and now it follows something different as of September 2021. They now follow an S&P index. And the number one best methodology based on just my opinion is SCHD. They also require a minimum of 10 years of dividend growth. They also exclude REITs. Weights are capped at 4%. Uh, and this so is very similar to VIG, except for a couple extra things. One, they cap sectors at no more than 25% of the portfolio. And they also have a unique fundamental screen that they look at. So those fundamental scores include a cash flow to debt ratio, they're look, also looking at a company's return on equity, which is something that Buffett has historically looked at pretty closely. And they're also ranking by dividend yield and dividend growth. So those fundamental screens make SCHD a little bit higher quality, a little bit more focus on competitive advantage and dividend growth, which I think give it the nod, at least at a methodology level over VIG. They also rebalance this portfolio quarterly. Next, we'll take a look at the diversification. Again, I'm gonna start with my number five being the worst, and then we'll work up to the best. So at number five, the least diversified of these ETFs is SCHD. They have 100 holdings, which is less than others on this list, 
And they also get a bit of a knock for the total stocks in the top 10, which for this portfolio is almost 41%. And here you can see some of the top 10 holdings as of today, which is June 2nd, 2022. Obviously this will change based on when you're watching this video, but as of today, this is the top 10 holdings of this portfolio. At number four, we have DVY. It also has basically hundred holdings, 99 to be exact. But what gives this the nod over SCHD is the 19% weighting in the top 10. So instead of 41, we have a lot less concentration risk. However, the nature of the stocks in this portfolio tends to be a lot more focused on yield and a lot less focused on quality. We'll see how that manifests here in just a few minutes. At number three, we have VIG. VIG has 287 different holdings, so a lot more diversification than the first two as far as quantity. This is also weighted by market cap, so you're ending up with big businesses like Microsoft, UNH, and Johnson & Johnson up near the top. The total weighting in the top 10 is just under 30%. At number two, we have Degro. Degro has over 400 different holdings, and only 25% are in the top 10. Again, we see some of the bigger companies at the top of the list, Pfizer, J&J, &J, and Microsoft. You'll also notice that this one is not market cap weighted since we have Apple here at 2.6. This one is weighted by the total dividends paid. And the most diversified ETF on this list is VYM. It has the most holdings at 444. It also has the second least amount in the top 10 at 22.7%. This one is also market cap weighted. So again, we see similar names at the top, J&J, Procter & Gamble, and Exxon. Next, we'll take a look at the expenses being charged by each one of these ETFs. And in this particular category, there's very little distinguishing the top four. SCHD charges 0.06. That is tied with VIG, which also charges 0.06. VYM charges 0.06. And Degro charges just slightly more at 0.06. I'm going to give this tied for first just because the difference between 0.06 and 0.08 is basically non-material non at all, just a little bit more expensive. Uh, but DVY is by far the most expensive of these ETFs. It gets a score of five at a annual expense ratio of 0.39%. Next, we're gonna take a look at the all important topic of risk, meaning how much does this ETF tend to draw down when the market goes through a correction or a bear market. We're gonna look at a few time periods, specifically the financial crisis of 0809. We'll look at the COVID crisis of 2020. And then we'll also take a look at how it is doing in the current little correction or potentially bear market, depending on what happens, uh, that we're going through in 2022. We'll start with the portfolios in the 2008 and 2009 financial crisis. So this is a maximum drawdown from the, the top, which was at the end of 07 for most of these ETFs. And through March of 2009, which was roughly the market bottom. And you can see there's only three scores here. So we've got some of these ETFs that don't have data going back that far. But the three that we do have are VIG, which was the best performing, declined by 47% roughly top to bottom. The second best score here was the high dividend yield from Vanguard VYM. That was down roughly 57% or just slightly more than the S&P 500. And then the iShare Select Dividend ETF or DVY, that was down by over 62.5%. Again, we talked about earlier, some of those holdings were a little higher yield, a little higher debt, a little higher risk that definitely shows itself in a period like 07 to 09. So how did these ETFs do in 2020, the COVID crisis? Again, we see the best performing ETF was VIG. And then we had several ETFs that were basically tied for second with VYM, SCHD here at down 28%, and then DVY, excuse me, DGRO also down 28.3%. And then once again, the worst performer was DVY down 35.2%. And then 2022, this current correction has been a little different as it's mostly been driven by rising rates, not necessarily big time recession fears. So I don't know that this is completely 
accurate with respect to which of these I would think would do better in an actual bear market, in an actual recession. But just for completion's sake, uh, actually here we see VIG is the worst performer, whereas in the actual recessions that we saw, it did the best. And then you see, again, the opposite, DVY, historically the worst performer in a recession, has done the best in this little sell-off down just a hair above negative 3%. SCHD and VYM are both down less than 5%. And then Degro is here close to VIG. These are they're pretty similar funds down 9.3%. So when ranking these, I just took roughly the average score. In some cases, we didn't have all the data, but based on kind of these three time periods, I would rank DVY as the most risky, VYM the second most risky gets a four, SCHD and Degro both tied for second, very similar risk profiles there. And then the best performer was VIG. Again, sometimes that doesn't always hold, but in a real recession, I think the quality of VIG tends to give it a little bit more downside protection than the others. Next, we're going to take a look at the performance of these ETFs. Again, we didn't have all of the time history, but we're going to match them for when we do have data. And the first time period we're going to look at is June of 2014 through June of 2022. We do have data for all five ETFs over this time period. This was the only time period that that was the case. The best performer here was SCHD, up over 159%. In second place was Degro at up 147%. Third place, VIG. And then coming in fourth and fifth were DVY and VYM respectively. If we remove Degro, we can actually get back a little bit further. We can go back to October of 2011 and compare the four ETFs through June of 2022. If we do that, we again have SCHD at the top of total return performance. And again, this is dividends reinvested. And we basically have a virtual tie for second with DVY, VIG, and VYM, basically posting very, very similar results. And then three of our ETFs have data going back all the way to November of 2006. If we take a look at this longer view, we can compare how VIG, VYM, and DVY performed. In this longer view, we see that VIG comes out on top with VYM in second, and the relatively risky DVY coming in last. So again, using the available time periods that we have, doing the best we can to compare the two, I'm gonna rank them like this. VYM, I think, gets a five for the worst performance. DVY is right there at number four. VIG is solid, but not the best performer. If you would look at a risk-adjusted basis, this one could be close to the top, uh, Degro comes in at number two, and then the best performer over these time periods on average was SCHD. Now let's take a look at how these ETFs actually do at growing the dividend, which is kind of the point of dividend growth investing. So how does this apply to an ETF? There were only three ETFs that had data going back before 2008. This is some data from YCharts, which suggests that $10,000 worth of income starting here in 2007 would have grown to nearly 38,000 if you had invested in VYM. The VIG portfolio would have been second, growing 10,000 to roughly 28,000. And then the slowest growing over this time period was DVY at just under 17,000. However, there's one other thing to point out here and that is the consistency of the dividend growth. You can see that the purple line, which is VIG, generally trends higher each and every year. Whereas if you look at something like VYM, you've got this big spike going up to 08, and then you actually did have some pretty substantial dividend cuts over the next couple of years. So that's also something to keep in mind when you're looking at these dividend growth ETFs. They can have dividends be cut or the ETF may sell a stock that's at a higher yield and buy one at a lower yield, effectively cutting the dividend in a sense. 
If we do the same thing going back to 2014, we can get all five of these ETFs looking at similar time horizons. So again, a $10,000 dividend income starting in 2014 would have grown the most up to over 20,000 in SCHD. Second was VIG at just under 18,000. And then we see a virtual tie for Degro and DVY. And then in last place was VYM. So based on dividend growth, both nominally and the consistency, I would rank them as DVY getting a five, being the worst, VYM uh, at a four, Degro gets a three, and then VIG comes in at number two with SCHD being the clear winner in the dividend growth category. Here we'll take a look at the dividend yield of each one of these portfolios going back through time. iShares Select Dividend ETF or DVY is tied with SCHD. Both of those currently have a yield of just under 3%. VYM is very close at a 2.83. And then the lower yielding ETFs are Degro at 2.12 and VIG at under 1.9. And then you can see that throughout time, the dividend yield changes based on both the dividend payment that is being paid and also the price of the ETF. So if you get the price dropping 50%, then the dividend yield would increase by the same amount, assuming the dividend stayed constant. So here DVY reached an almost 6% dividend yield back in 2020 as the prices absolutely collapsed. So historically, DVY has had the larger yield that's only changed really very recently as SCHD has caught up quite a bit. So based on dividend yield, we have to give VIG the lowest score at five. Degro gets a four. VYM comes in at number three with a tie for the highest yield going to both SCHD and DVY. So now which of these ETFs is the best overall here I'm going to combine each of the scores, simply taking an average of each of the seven individual components. Coming in at number five in last place, DVY gets a four average. Its best score was income. It got a one for that one. The worst scores were dividend growth, dividend consistency, it also had the highest expense ratio, and it was the riskiest in 2008, 2009. Number four, VYM gets a 3.29 average. Its best scores were on diversification and it also tied with the others for the lowest expense ratio. It scored the worst in my assessment of the methodology and then also performance across time periods wasn't as good as some of these others. Number three, uh, Degro. Degro scored an average of 2.57. It scored best in expenses and it scored worst in income. This and VIG are very close, but the nod between the two would go to VIG. It scores a 2.43 average. Its best score is tied with the others on the expense ratio, but also risk. I think if you're looking for the best possible downside protection from an ETF, a dividend ETF, VIG would probably be the best bet there but you sacrifice on the income, which we see in its worst scoring category. Dividend yield was by far the lowest of these ETFs at under 1.9. And then the number one best dividend ETF on all of these metrics is SCHD. Across these seven criteria, it ranked an average of 1.71. It received top marks in the methodology, income, growth, expenses, and performance. The worst score was diversification, but keep in mind that this is still a fund that owns 100 stocks. The biggest knock is that it is fairly heavily concentrated in the top 10 holdings with 40% of the portfolio weighted towards those names. But as a whole, SCHD is an extremely impressive ETF and based on this analysis, is my number one scoring dividend ETF. How do these ETFs fit into your overall portfolio? I don't have time to go into that in this video, but I am considering making a comprehensive ETF e-course. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description below. For more content, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video the best. 
So click on that and I will see you in the next video.